Hey guys, what's growing? It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. New year, new intro. It is January 3rd, and this is the one relatively dry day we're gonna have, so I wanted to come out to the farm. We've been gone for two weeks uh, down to Florida to visit my family, which you have seen some footage of that. And then also, uh, right after that, we came, came home like around midnight and then immediately went up to Tahoe, and um, I'll put some footage in here to show you the snowshoeing that we did and stuff. There was um, about three feet of snow <laughs> in about 12 hours, so it was really intense. It is Tuesday and I am coming out to the farm for the first time in two weeks to check on things. We are about to get another atmospheric river which will probably deliver us another five or more inches of rain. Um, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, that's a good thing, right? You, you're in a drought. Yes, technically we are still in a drought, a pretty severe drought. Um, we won't know what these atmospheric rivers uh, will have contributed to to ending the drought or lessening the drought until the spring. Um, <clears throat> an atmospheric river is something that's is kind of peculiar to um, the west, to the west coast. So instead, we do sometimes get regular storms where you have, you know, like like a circular storm formation, the, the movement, you know, circular movement, etc. But a lot of what we get during our rainy season is what's called atmospheric rivers and it's coming from oftentimes Hawaii um, and the South Pacific and what it is is literally a river of water in the sky. Uh, it's something like three times the amount of water that's in the Amazon River it comes overhead and when it hits our coastal mountains it starts to fall as rain uh, and then when it gets up to the Sierras it falls as snow. Um, this is sometimes they take a long time to move through which increases the amount of, of precipitation that we get that can be good and that can be bad because we've had forest fires we have a lot of open land burn scars that turns into mudslides and uh, we have sinkholes develop and all kinds of fun stuff so it's it's extreme we have the extreme drought and then we have the extreme moisture that comes all at once um, and then the land and our drains and everything don't have time to manage it so um, our pool right now i'll show you some pictures in here is brown it looks like sewage because uh our, there's a hillside next to our pool and above that is somebody's driveway and the driveway is so old and so buckled from lots of earth movement over the years that uh the water when it comes in large amounts very fast can't really go down the the drain that's built in up there so what it does is it finds its easiest way downhill which is under our fence down our hillside as a waterfall basically a mudslide into our pool it sucks and so right now the pool is brown because of the last storm and tomorrow we're set to get a storm that's even stronger than the one we've just had so uh, up to five inches of rain maybe more uh, back uh, October 2021 we got 10 inches of rain in 12 hours. Um, that caused major flooding. Um, and already from the storm that just happened a couple days ago on New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, 
lots of people in San Francisco have um, their homes flooded, their basements flooded, stop, shops and stores flooded, um, and so it's only going to get worse. So it's a feast or famine here, and that makes it really challenging. So all that being said, I wanted to come out here today and see how my lower field, which is on the downslope, uh, dealt with the deluge that we had and see how things are growing because like I said I haven't been out here in two weeks so let's go take a look we have a super dense fog today um, it's gonna be dicey coming out of here because I won't be able to see very far and it's a it's a curved road so trying to take a left out of here is gonna be real interesting hopefully everybody's got their headlights on um, Everything here starting to get, you know, weather beaten. Uh, the rains were so heavy that this is what happens. This is why I wanted to make sure I covered everything at home. See how it flattens everything? That's fine, because I'm gonna cut all this back and it'll just come back in the spring. I don't worry about that. But I would be very concerned if that happened to my home crops or the crops here. So I'm really happy that they're under protection. Um, I, I'm not gonna worry about weeding or anything like that. Um, that can wait. <laughs> uh, we are, like I said, set to get a huge amount of water and there's nothing I could do about if it does flood out here. I just want to kind of know what to be prepared for. Um, you can see some of the daffodils are starting to come up here. So this will be really pretty. I can't wait to see what it all looks like. And this bed desperately needs to be weeded. But I do see, you know, California poppies here and daffodils coming up. So lots of weeds, lots of grass. I gotta get in here and do a major job, but that's all right. Job for another day. All right, so let's go see how things are going in the high tunnel. Um, looks okay. Uh, I mean, the ranunculus look absolutely amazing. I was wondering if they were gonna have, if we were gonna have any actual flowers already because some of them are getting real big. Do need to come in here and weed desperately need to weed. It's not too bad, but I need to come in here with my hoe and get that done. And I see the first tulips starting to come up. Look at that. Which variety is this? It is Valdivia. Oh, and apricot impressions. So that's great. And as I said, the ranunculus looking amazing. I'm assuming that the, uh, that the irrigation is working in here. <laughs> it looks pretty dry. Uh, I know that sounds crazy with all this rain, but you know, we are undercover. So, um, oh yeah, it's working because I can see it over there. But these, I don't know. Anyway, I do see some rodent holes. So I need to come in here and treat again. Um, not too many weeds in this bed, which is great. I see, you know, some grasses and stuff, but that's all right. Not a big problem. The ranunculus looking good and not yet flowering, which honestly is a good thing because um, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. Too much other stuff to do. All right, but they're getting big. I don't even know if I see any bud formation yet, which again is fine because we're going to start, we're heading into January and February, which is when we get our coldest temperatures. So I'd rather them not really start forming flower buds and just kind of hold off. I'm wondering if any water is coming out of this at all. It is there, but I don't know about everywhere else. But they look good. They don't look droopy. Look like they're getting plenty of water. All right, so yeah, just need to come and do some weeding. Um, and then all the seedlings that I planted, they're still here. They're not really doing anything, but that's all right. They're actually still there. Let's see, over here, this bed, this is all empty. Uh, need to come in and weed the pathways so they don't start encroaching onto the beds. Seedlings here, still just hanging out. That's cool. All right, and then clearly lots of water over here uh, coming in from the outside. So I just went to check the irrigation. The battery's dead on the timer, so no water is happening in that tunnel. Um, that's okay right now. Uh, it can go a couple more days because it will be pouring rain. I don't know how much water runs underground. 
uh, the feeding these beds, I, I don't know. Um, but some of the bed tops do look a little dry. So as soon as the rain lets up, I mean, we're gonna, next, next two days, Wednesday and Thursday is gonna be torrential rain, lightning, heavy winds, et cetera, uh, and, uh, and cold. And then, um, then for like four days, it's just steady rain. But I can still come out here uh, and cover this up so I can put a new battery in it so that at least it will run in the high tunnel because <laughs> it's ironic, right? I mean, they're covered so they're not getting water from the sky. They still need water from the irrigation. But all this rain that we've had certainly means that the, um, the well is replenishing, which is very good news. So, all right, I'm going to clear out of here now and then we're gonna go check on everything at home I, I did a quick walkthrough already but I didn't uncover to look and see what was going on underneath uh, I think there's been a whole lot of growth um, which is great they're gonna need to stay covered because we're gonna have like I said super heavy rain and I don't want to flatten everything so uh, let's go check and see what everything looks like in the home garden okay so we're back home in the home garden um, I'm gonna show you what's going on here. And then uh, first I wanna show you that our normally dry creek bed is running now because we've had so much rain and it's gonna be overflowing again, overflowing its banks tomorrow. So here's what it looks like. Uh, it comes from way, 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 way up the hill. All the runoff and everything comes down into this creek bed. It goes behind our house completely. And our house is up on a hill above the creek, which is a good thing. Uh, but there's been a lot of erosion, so I'm, concerned my my main concern honestly at this point is that none of our trees fall down uh, because that happened last year huge oak tree fell on both of our cars um, and we have these giant redwoods as you can see right there and uh, if those fall chances are they'll crash through our house it's actually a really terrifying idea <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so that's my main hope right now is that we do not have any catastrophic failures of trees. Here's the creek. Um, lovely sound. It goes under the street and then I'm not really sure where it goes. I don't know what creek it feeds. Okay, so let's check on um, the stuff that's growing in the garden. Um, one of my friends came and I was so grateful and she covered everything while we were gone because I had all the covers off and then the heavy rains got uh, scheduled and we got stuck. Our flights were canceled and so we couldn't come home when we were supposed to and I was worried about everything getting flattened and I'm glad that she came and covered everything. Um, so I do have a little baby uh, cauliflower here and another one forming here. I don't know that they'll end up actually growing much more, but we'll see. I'm just gonna leave them. You can see where I definitely need to do a lot of weeding. Uh, we didn't even bother covering this bed. Uh, it's just stock and it's very short, so I don't think it's gonna be a problem. This I don't even have covers set up on. These are scabiosa and I think straw flower, maybe. Anyway, those are gonna be fine. But I'm very, very happy that she covered everything else because it looks like we've got lots of growth going on under here. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of growth. So all this stuff had, you know, gotten eaten by birds. That's uh, probably Ami Mages. This is all Orlea getting big. Look at that. This is uh, some Dacus in here looking good. I'm gonna lift this bag. I gotta recover everything, but I just wanna check how things are going. Yeah. Straw flower interplanted with the cilia, all looking good. These are these are um, snapdragons left over from last year that just self-sewed. Yeah, that's all looking really good. Very happy with that. Nothing flat, even though it has rained hard. All right, so now I'm gonna recover this. And I have to, I think I've said this before, but you gotta, if you're gonna do this, you want it to be tightly covered um, because otherwise the rain will just flatten the row cover and then it defeats the purpose. Okay, so let's check this row. I know that my cabbages are looking great. Definitely big and chunky under there. Ugh 
all up. Yeah, Snapdragon's looking good. Everybody looking happy. Cover this here. All right. So even this, even the straw flower that got damaged by birds, it's coming back. It's doing fine. All right, and this is all status here. Oh, huh, look at that. That's a ranunculus. Sometimes you miss some. All right. Scabiosa down here. Straw flower, I mean star flower. And then fever few. Looking good. All right, so I'm happy with that. Everything's happy and healthy. Not getting completely decimated by rodents right now, which is a good thing. Uh, so that stuff is working. Let's come over here and just tighten this up a bit. And elsewhere, you know, things just looking rough and ragged because it's January. That's to be expected. Look at the rose hips. They're really big. So pretty. All right, so um, under here, Radishes and carrots, looking fine. And the onions doing fine still. This is broccoli. I don't think it's gonna head up for me, but you never know. All right, so let's go check on things in the backyard. I haven't been back there yet. Oh, also in this bed where the peonies are and all the daffodils, that definitely daffodils coming up. This is the grossness that is a muddy pool. Um, the mud comes down from a hole under the fence uh, where it can't find any, it can't drain and our neighbors are up there. It can't drain through their drain. So it finds a way under our fence and it comes down here and it just spills over as a mud waterfall into here. Really sucks. Uh, this is not a new problem either. Okay, um, so all the hydrangeas are dormant right now as expected. Let's see how it's going in here. Uh, clearly been plenty of water because these two buckets are just full just from sitting out. Um, I'm hoping that this is completely full. Yes, okay. And if it's not completely full, it will be. Um, because the system does work. All right, let's check in the greenhouse and see how things are going in here. All right, it's packed full of other stuff because I'm not using it right now. This is our, our little tiny chipper. Um, but, you know, I haven't been in here in two weeks. You know, none of the succulents are gonna need water, but even this, this pothos didn't get any water and it looks fine. And same thing with those guys down there. Hmm. Okay, that's really all that I've got growing in here right now. It's just the, these guys are overwintering to keep them out of the heavy rains. Um, and then once all of our rains are done in the late spring, I'll clean them up, I'll put new rocks on them, I'll pull out like the dead stuff, um, start propagating, and then they'll go back outside. But clearly we're getting a leak somewhere because this table should not be full of water. So, I mean, that's not really a big deal, but I'm curious as to where that's coming from. So maybe tomorrow, I mean, everything up here is dry. So maybe tomorrow during the downpour, <laughs> I'll venture out here. And uh, this is a, just a big bag of mycorrhizal fungi to mix in when I do planting. <sighs> Gross. All right, yeah, so this is just a mess. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning that up right now. We also tend to get rivers in here. Um, so I'm gonna raise this guy up here. This is the worm bin that's usually outside. It's too cold in the winter time for them outside. They stay uh, better in here. I do need to feed them. Uh, but yeah, we often get a river that runs in the heavy rain underneath the greenhouse, underneath the boardwalk and out the front. So I don't ever want to put anything super important down on the bottom here. But all things considered, you know, until it starts pouring rain again, 
it's looking okay. Oh, it smells really good in here. When it gets damp outside, the cedar starts to release its scent again. It smells so good. But I do need to start seeds this week. Uh, not a lot, but I need to start seeds. And I might be doing that. Well, probably not tomorrow or the next day because it'll be like so loud in here. <laughs> Torrential downpours on this roof is, is deafening, uh, but maybe on Friday when it's uh, just raining and not dumping, um, we can come out here and I'll start those seeds um, and do some cleanup. And But I think I am going to come out and try to see where this leak is coming from because there's a big puddle on this table. So clearly it's coming from somewhere above. And right now I can't see where that could be. But, you know, not, not the worst thing. It's going to be fine. All right, so um, I think that I will do a quick cycle through the back garden and see if we've had a lot of erosion and how things are looking um, before I wrap up for today. My wreath on the outside here is definitely falling apart. I think the birds have been nibbling um, <laughs> on those dried oranges that are now um gross that's pretty gross all right so back here is a slope um but nothing looks too bad this is a giant hellebore it just hasn't started flowering yet however we do have some buds starting all right so this all looks okay these these oaks i worry about um they would land on top of the greenhouse the creek down here Oh, such a mess out here. I can hear the creek running. All right, you can see it down there. Uh, that is kind of normal for this time of year. But we, when we got home, we noticed a huge wide floodplain a little further down of mud, which meant it really overflowed its banks. So I'm sure that will happen again. Yeah, so we just hope that these trees that are here on the side of the hill don't come down. This one would go into the pool if it came down. Uh, and if these guys go, we're in a world of hurt. They're tall enough that they could actually hit the house from here or someone else's house. Last year in all of our storms, there were multiple trees down, not just in our yard, but lots of people lost trees. All right. Nothing happening in the green stalks because it is winter, cold. I mean, strawberries look terrible here, but you can see they still have nice green growth on them. And actually there's some berries on some sides. Uh, the herbs are doing fine. Citrus is gonna need another treatment of iron pretty soon because it's been so wet um, that without treating them with iron, um, they will just, run out of nutrients and uh, so I'll give them some fertilizer soon basically it gets all leached out with the heavy rains all right yeah some lettuce but those need to be planted up soon so that's part of the seeds that I'm starting this week is more lettuce and stuff here's another view of the creek you can see how wide the floodplain is down there and it shouldn't be that big but it is All right, cottage garden, <laughs> looking pretty awful, but that's how it always looks this time of year. <laughs> it's before everything is blooming. Uh, things are just kind of lying dormant, not doing a whole lot, but it's fine. That's to be expected. Sleeping in advance of waking and blooming. And it is January in a couple of weeks. I will be doing my annual pruning of the rose bushes and training them. I mean, look how crazy they are, insane. Um, so I will be cutting them way, way back and training them around these poles more, but they're still blooming. These, I mean, it kind of doesn't matter how cold it gets. These guys continue to push out blooms, which I think is crazy. So I think that's gonna be it for today. Um, I know there wasn't much to that video, but thanks for coming with me and checking on everything. Um, I think we are as battened down as we can get uh, before this major storm. I will 
take some video of how hard it's coming down. Um, one good thing about getting the storms this time of year, this heavy, rather than in October, is that there's fewer leaves. So one of the problems we run into is there are two drains here on the patio. I'll show those to you in a minute. And in the fall, when all the leaves are falling, they block those drains and the water has nowhere to go. It rises, it comes close to our foundation. It's a pain in the butt. We're out here scooping the leaves consistently. But most leaves have fallen already. So now when it dumps rain, even though the drains can't keep up, they at least don't get clogged. Yeah. There's that drain and there's one over there. So, but you can see how close it is to our house. Real important that it drains. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you have a good time in your garden, garden planning probably, because most people are in the Northern Hemisphere are in the cold right now. Um, but I will see you in the next one.